In this video, we're gonna help you prepare for Herman Prime in four different ways. First of all, we're gonna talk about how the skills in the English version of this skill description are a little bit different than the Chinese version. Secondly, I'm gonna refresh for you how poison counters work. And thirdly, we're gonna talk about how active skills and passive skills ultimately stack. Lastly, I'm gonna give you recommendations for talents and pairings for Herman Prime. He's almost certainly going to be used as the primary commander in pairings that you use in the open field, but there may be some exceptions and we'll talk about that. So let's get started right away by getting a look at the active skill. This has one key difference from the active skill as it was revealed yesterday. And in case you didn't see that video, um, there was an official Chinese source that revealed all the skills in Chinese. We had to go through some translation hoops. It was a little bit of a pain to go and do that. But in the English version of this skill, it's 2,000 damage factor and applies two stacks of poison, not three, to each target that you hit. Now, this is a fat AoE. It's actually a half circle, which is really powerful, just like Ethel Fled. But what is surprising is this decreased stack of poison. Like, I mean, look, mistakes happen all the time, but like, it's such a simple thing. Like, it's not a translation issue to be two stacks versus three stacks. Anyways, I'm inclined to believe that the two stacks version is correct. And I think someone sent me a message, I can't seem to find it, where they had said that the official Chinese source had said, actually there was a typo and it's two stacks, not three stacks of poison. So if that's true, and this is right, it's only two stacks of poison, what, why does that matter? Well, the expertise skill, give me back my lesions, which is, hey, okay, that's a cool name. Um, this basically makes it so when you have applied 25 total stacks of poison onto enemies, you then trigger your active skill all over again. Now, I got a lot of questions about this skill. The number one question was, well, how do you ever get to 25 stacks if Tommy is clearing poison? And my understanding is that these are two completely separate and almost entirely unrelated triggers. What I think Herman Prime is going to be doing is he's going to be checking how many times in total has my march deployed a po poison stack? And it adds up all those poison stacks, okay? It does not matter if Tommy clears off the stacks. You're still deploying, applying poison stacks. So it doesn't care whether or not they're still there. All it cares about is, have you deployed poison stacks? The other thing that is significant is, remember, you can only get 15 poison stacks on one target anyways. You're not trying to get to 25 stacks of poison on a single enemy. You're talking about 25 total stacks of poison wherever you put them, all right? So this is important to understand. That's part of the reason why Tommy is, I still think, a really great pairing here. But the other skill that is a little bit different than the translation we have is over here, Alpha Wolf. It says, whenever their troop uses an active skill while attacking another troop on the map, their current target loses 20% defense for two seconds. This is actually really good. And I want to talk for just a moment about how passive and active skills work. You see, active skills will not stack with other active skills, but passive skills always stack with other passive skills, and passive skills always stack with other active skills. Now, the same skill will overwrite itself. I mean, the exact same name of skill will overwrite itself, but you should be able to get the 20% defense reduction from the Herman Prime and also the 30% defense reduction on a passive skill from Tommy going at the same time, which means you could have an upwards of a 50% defense reduction on your enemy, which is amazing. Now, the thing I really like about Alpha Wolf, specifically this over here, is that this defense reduction should be up very frequently. It's when the active skill of the primary commander is used. On the next turn, you have boosted defense. On the next turn, you have boosted defense and you've done the active skill of your secondary commander. And then on the next turn, you have boosted defense. And on the next turn, you have boosted defense. Actually, it's a defense reduction, not boosted defense. But you, you know what I was doing, right? So my point is that in every like seven second rage cycle, you are going to have reduced the defense of your enemy for four of those seconds. That's really good. That's really, really good. Okay? That's... that's I cannot overstate how good that is. Now, the other thing is that this is when attacking another troop on the map. So this is going to be very good for swarming rallies, but it's not unfortunately going to be very good for swarming garrisons because that is not a troop on the map. Bit of a bummer, 
but also this commander will be completely OP if he was also good for swarming garrisons. And he's still going to be good, but like he will be busted if you also have this applying. Now, the final piece of this is actually very different about Alpha Wolf is that this commander's troop deals 20% more AOE skill damage when attacking other troops on the map. Well, wait a minute. AOE skill damage. We don't usually see buffs specific to AOE skill damage, but here we are with a buff specific to AOE skill damage. So this is a little bit surprising. However, I still think Tommy is the jam and I'm not being stubborn. It's just the two of them together with their poison stacks are actually just cracked. All right. So at this point, we've almost reviewed the entire kit of the commander. Just as a reminder, the second skill is giving you 20% attack, 20% defense, 15% march speed for your archers. And the fourth skill is giving you an instant proc trigger of more poison effects. It's area of effect damage, only 200 factor, but it does deploy two stacks of poison to an upwards of three enemies, which is really good for give me back my legions. Now, why are we reviewing this entire kit? Well, there's a number of reasons. First of all, I did want to talk about what was different. But second of all, I want to point out a big trend that the developers are pushing, which is that I think... Different troop types have different agendas. And I think the agenda for your uh, archers is going to be skill damage, either enhancing your skill damage or making the enemy take more skill damage. I've mentioned that in a previous video. We just see so much of that on archers. But this is important to understand because that means because so much of that is tied into active skill use, generating rage is super powerful. I mean, super powerful for your archers. So that means that things like the Horn of Fury are super good. That means that things like Trajan are really good. Buffs from Trajan are insane. William is really good generating extra rage. The faster your skill cycle, the more poison stacks you're deploying, even if you pair with Tommy and clear them off yourself, okay? From your main target that you're hitting, your area of effect poison stacks are still applying. I feel like, this is so powerful. Now, the other reason this is so powerful is that this extra activation of a skill is going to take a really long time if you don't use Tommy. If you do use Tommy, I would anticipate that within like 12 or 13 seconds, you're going to get an extra activation of your active skill all over again, which should give you six more stacks of poison to your next activation of give me back my legions, which is insanely powerful. I mean, not only for deploying poison, but also remember this should count as an active skill trigger. If you're using Herman Prime as the primary commander, you're going to get these support tree talents to trigger all over again, including rejuvenate, giving you another hundred rage on top, which makes your skill cycle. Yeah. Even faster, baby, even faster. So I think that the Herman Prime combo paired with Tommy is going to be the jam because it's going to accelerate this give me back my legions. But a bunch of people were like, bro, you're such a pay to win. Us free to plays don't have Tommy. This sucks. And I was like, well, let's pump the brakes on being so negative and talk about that for a second. So is Herman going to be a commander, Herman Prime, that you have to use with Tommy? And I would say absolutely not. In fact, if you're only bringing one archer march, I mean, it's going to be Herman Prime for all of this AOE poison goodness, and then it's going to be Zuge Leong as the secondary. Um, you could opt to go the other way around if you like this skill tree, and we'll give you talents for both approaches here, and there's definitely virtues to debuffing the enemy and their ability to deal damage, which is what Zuge Leong does. But the synergy with Zuge Leong and Herman Prime is amazing. In fact, on my restart account, where I run one archer march, Budoka Prime is going to be sitting on the bench. She's going to sit on the bench, and in goes the uh, Herman Prime, Zuge Leon combo. That's it. Now, if you have two marches, look, you could even say, Chiskel, I don't have Zuge Leon yet. Well, I think Zuge Leon would actually be a better project than Herman Prime. I could be wrong on that, but I mean, I suppose Herman Prime has more march speed, which is nice. You get more damage out of Zuge Leon. But if you went with Herman Prime and Isong, guess what, folks? That's going to be a great combo. Herman Prime is super versatile and is going to work with pretty much any archer that you might already be using, with the exception of Artemisia, who really only works with Boudicca Prime. So any other archer you want to pair with, I think is going to be fine. I should say any meta archer you, you are going to pair with should be fine. If you're going into two archer marches, I think your best bet for your Herman Prime is going to be 
Herman Prime with Tommy, and then you pair Boudicca Prime with Zuge Liang. Easy choices, right? The alternative here is that you could use Nebu, who would, instead of Tommy, have nice area of effect damage. That'd be a great choice. You could you could use Esong, which I think is going to be more area of effect damage, right? I think that if you are more of a whale, bringing more marches, the Tommy becomes more valuable. If you are less of a whale or not a whale at all, um, right, then bringing Tommy becomes less relevant because you're only bringing a small number of marches to the field anyways. And in that regard, do I think that Herman Prime is a must-use commander? Well, if you're the kind of player who's bringing five to seven marches, I think he's better than Boudicca Prime. I mean, look, Boudicca Prime's great, but she only hits one target. And her debuff's very good, but again, she only hits one target. The area of effect damage that you get from this active skill and the debuffing that you're going to get is going to be so good. I think that the Herman Prime is a nice upgrade from Boudicca, but like, you could... You could skip it and be fine. So with all that said, there is something I want to show you with Tommy and multiple targets deploying poison to the same thing as you. And what I said in a previous video is in fact correct, which is that Tommy will clear off all of the stacks of poison regardless of who deployed them onto the target. And then you start stacking up fresh again. So if we look in the battle log, I went and hit the same thing as Yoda 808. We both were hitting a barb, and we both had Tommy. And I used my active skill first. The target was all the way up to 42% extra skill damage taken. You can see that over here. So that means that there were 14 stacks of poison. And on the next turn, there are only two stacks of poison. So what happened? I used the active skill. It cleared off all the stacks of poison, but on that turn... Both Yoda808 and I had done an attack, and that each of us had then deployed poison onto the target. So on the next turn, it was back up to two stacks of poison already. That's how that works. We can also see that as I go a little bit further, we're up to 12, then 18, then 24. And here, uh, Yoda has used the, uh, oh, they hasn't used the active skill yet. We're up to 30. Holy moly. All right, we're up to 30, 36. Dude, where's the skill activation from Yoda? Did I miss it? Uh, I did miss it somewhere. Here it's at max stacks. There's no way it took Yoda that long to do a skill activation. Where did I miss the, the jump to six? I'm actually a little confused. It's got to happen somewhere. We go here. I mean, maybe he skill cycled at the exact same time I did. Uh, it's at six. Uh, oh, yeah, there's two turns in a row where it's six. So it took him a while to get his first skill activation, but he joined kind of mid midway through my first skill cycle anyways. So that's what that is. So anyways, all that to say, you clear all the poison stacks off, but you're still deploying poison stacks. Weirdly enough, if you're using Herman Prime and you don't use Tommy, you're actually not going to clear any poison at all. But the funny thing is that I think that because more people are going to be using Herman Prime and putting poison stacks places, Tommy is even better to use. So if we get a look at Tommy's kit again really quickly, she is going to do, on top of all the other great stuff she's doing, a solid 2200 damage factor on max stacks, and that is pretty good. So if we get a look at her skill here, remember you can have an upwards of 15 poison stacks. It's 80 damage factor per, per poison stack. If you're at 10, or I guess technically it's 11 or higher poison stacks, I think. So uh, yeah, <laughs> That's a, that is a lot of damage. Now, granted, you get more damage from other heroes, but they are deploying poison. And that poison debuff, it's just it's just that good, man. It really is. So I think that Tommy's going to be a great choice. And it, it works really well because you wanted to have slow skill cycles because of your desire to get all the poison stacks applied, but slow skill cycles suck. But because you'll have lots of people hitting the same things as you putting poison on, and Tommy putting poison on, and Herman Prime putting poison on, I think it's going to work great. Now, what talents would you use here? I think that for your talent build, you have some pretty easy choices, and there's not that much to think about. And I can show you this on Amani, who's got Archer support and, you know, Garrison instead of versatility. Here's the build you would ultimately use, though. This is a field build, tried and true, tested time and time again. Boom. 
Now, remember, you only put two points into Rejuvenate because you're going to overrage if you do this any other way. But I think this is a pretty easy choice here. You're going to go in, two points into Rejuvenate, three points into Emergency Protection. You're not really taking advantage, I think, of healing that's happening in this march. Um, Tommy's not going to heal for you. The only commander that would heal is actually Boudicca Prime, funny enough. So, like, if you paired Herman Prime with Boudicca Prime, because for some reason you don't have Zuge Liang, for example, uh, the kind of cool thing there is that the healing will give you 9% attack that Boudicca does. The healing on Boudicca would be kind of nice in that situation. And then you just go all the way up in the archer tree. Easy choice, all right? You get some extra skill damage out of that, which is really good in this situation. And I feel like boosting your skill damage, given that this commander is doing so much skill damage, right? He's got the extra AoEs, is going to be the way to go. So Herman Prime, man, he's going to be super goaded and super strong. And again, I just like don't think there's a bad pairing in the house, but obviously area of effect damage is going to be really good. Now I say I don't think there's a bad pairing in the house, but like, you know, all right, don't pair with Amani, right? She's out of meta faded long ago. Normally in this kind of video, I'd say there's two other things you could be doing to prepare for archers. One is to start to work on archer equipment, but weirdly enough, we have an equipment update coming that we don't yet know exactly what the best set is going to be. I I mean, I, yeah, I just don't know how that's going to work. So like right now, Zuge Leong is looking pretty good, right? And this gear that I've got on him in this configuration, that's what I'm trying to say, I think this is going to be Biss, um, with the exception of if you had a crit KVK helmet and crit KVK weapon both, it would be better. But if you had only one crit on either of those, I actually think the full set's better right now because the 5% health bonus at the six-piece set is pretty nice. The other thing I would say you could do to prepare would be your armaments, but armaments are also in flux right now because there's new rare inscriptions that are on the way. So like right now, I'm not crafting, and right now I'm not personally getting any new armaments because there are not rare inscriptions dropping currently, but there will be rare inscriptions that do drop. So until that happens, from what I know so far, like I would rather spend my money after those rare inscriptions are available than like on armaments where I can't get a rare inscription. So it's kind of a weird time. Like your best preparation is to, you know, hold up your materials, waiting for the information on the new archer equipment um, and, and new equipment in general with the iconic tiers, is save up sculptures. And at this point, I guess we just wait. We know that Herman Prime is going to come from the Wheel of Fortune. I plan to spin the Wheel of Fortune a lot in order to get as much value as possible. And of course, as soon as Herman Prime lands in game, I'm going to test him. So subscribe to the channel. Someone in my kingdom, one of my kingdoms, is going to max Herman Prime. So we'll go test him. 100% maxed out the day he shows up in game. That's that's always the game plan with the release of a new commander on the Chisco Gaming YouTube channel. So subscribe so you don't miss it. And if you want to see that last vid I did, sort of translating the skills from Chinese to English and giving my initial reactions, Card will be in the end screen in just a second. I think you'll like that vid. I hope you check it out.